Hi everyone, my name is Soon. For those of you who don't know me, um, it's nice to meet you. And for those of you who do, hello again. Welcome to our first installment of our Hand Lettering 101 series. I'm really excited that you all want to learn this skill. I think it's a great way to relieve stress, to express yourself creatively, and to be a blessing to other people too. Just want to reassure you, you don't need any prior knowledge or experience going into this. Um, so if you have handwriting that looks more like a scribble than it does a legible word, totally fine. Um, if you already know how to work a calligraphy nib and you're pretty much a pro, I invite you all to join too. So how this will work is I'll be posting a quick video as well as a challenge each week on the Slack channel. It's super chill, super easy. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So before we jump into our intro lesson, I just wanted to share how I personally got into this whole hand lettering stuff. Way back in elementary school, I was given alphabet practice sheets, similar to this one, and we had full-on units for handwriting. That's the first exposure I got. Then, as I looked around at my classmates' notes over the years, I remember being so intrigued that each person had their own unique handwriting style. Some were bubbly, some had all their letters the exact same width apart, and others had italicized writing that looked like the letters were almost running off the page. I spent some time observing and copying their different styles. Then, I began to really pick up experimenting in college. Here are some of my works throughout my year of college. These are mainly to show you that your writing can evolve a lot over time. The first piece on the left was done in 2015 as a Christmas present for my mom, since I didn't really have money to buy things. The second piece on the right was done in 2017 for a friend who was going through a hard time with her health, and I wanted to do this to encourage her. Some of you may know my friend Karina from Klesis. Um, she and I got together our sophomore year to make some cards for our friend's baptisms. And here are some recent works. The first one on the left was just something I did to remind myself of this verse and internalize God's word more personally. The last one here is a piece made for my brother as he was going through a rough patch in his life and wanted to remember this psalm. So you want to learn. Yar. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm really glad that you do. Let's go ahead and dive into our intro material then. One of the first things I wanted to cover was the difference between calligraphy and hand lettering, because those two terms get mixed up very often. Here are the definitions. Calligraphy, a type of decorative handwriting. Hand lettering, art of drawing letters where each letter acts as its own mini illustration. Okay, soon, you might say. That literally sounds exactly the same. And I hear you. So I thought this visual might help. If you look at these two A's, overall, they pretty much look the same. Um, but if you look at its basic composition, the calligraphy one is formed using strokes, whereas the hand-lettered one is formed using sketches. So calligraphy is a written form, whereas hand-lettering is a drawn form. You could say it's more like an illustration. So let's take a look at what elements make up a word. You might want to take some notes here because you're going to get quizzed on all these things later on. Just kidding. I'm playing with y'all. You do not need to know all of this stuff, but honestly speaking, you should probably know a handful of them because it's pretty helpful. Let's start off with the baseline. As the name suggests, this is the line that serves as the base or bottom for your lowercase letters. On the flip side, the X height is the line where the tops of the lowercase letters will reach. Fun fact, the X height is literally the height of a lowercase x, hence the name. All of the lowercase letters, such as A, E, O, N, should sit on the baseline and reach up to the X height. The ascender line is the topmost line for the letters that have strokes taller than the X height line. That includes letters like H, T, and K as the one that you see in the OK in the picture. You probably already know where this one's going. The descender line is the line for letters that hang down below the baseline. This is for letters such as G, Q, and Y to rest their tails. Now jumping into some font basics. The serif family is the most traditional branch of the lettering family. Serifs are the small lines that are added to the tips of the letters. As you might have guessed by the name, sans serif fonts lack those serifs. That makes these fonts appear much more sleek and modern. Script is usually cursive with the letters connected to one another. There is typically a variation in line thickness giving it an appealing flow. A display typeface is a typeface that is intended for use at large sizes for headings rather than for extended passages of body text. 
So that's it for this week. Join next week to learn how to develop your sans serif letters. I'll go ahead and leave you all with this challenge. Um, this week, take pictures of five different fonts that you see around you. Classify each font by its type in the captions. Go ahead and post it to the hashtag it's all right, <laughs> get it, <laughs> Slack channel, and shoot a DM or post on the channel for a topic you want to cover, a goal you want to reach, or a piece that you want to make through these times. All right, looking forward to hearing from y'all, and I'll see you next week.